hand, mm -hmm. you can do that yeah. underneath or you can do that on top of the wax. Um, you can use a grease marker or the grease pencil. I mean. yeah. yeah, grease pencils, those white over the wax, under the wax. And so I'll, I sometimes do some words or I don't know if it's like a journaling or just kind of stream of consciousness type of thing where I write on there, I might just do the marks, I might draw something, knowing that a lot of it's gonna go away mm. when I paint, but some of it may reveal itself as I build the layers depending on the colors. Like in that case, there's the, the yellow, for example, just, it was pretty translucent and it allowed the, the layers below mm -hmm. to show, whereas the black oh, was wow. opaque the black dot did not allow anything else to be seen through that. Mm -hmm. Do you use the term mark making? And I think of mark making as, as a whole process. A whole process. Where where are you differentiating when you say mark making? Well, so like at the base of the painting, when I start making it, it's it's taking tools and just you know writing things and just making marks and lines and squiggles and designs, making just random marks. Okay. Yeah. What paint do you use to mix with the wax? What what like what color? I mean, are they two paints, oil paints? Um, so it's an oil paint that where I leach out the oil because I the, you don't want too much oil. The oil and the wax they don't mix. So you want to get out as much of the oil as you can. You can use pigment powders to color the wax. Um, that's a little messy and not extremely healthy to be around all those powders, um, but that you can use that. You could um, do a combination. So it's my method is really just with the, the oil paint that has the oil leached out of it. And you can also buy these things ready-made. You can. Yeah, okay. but I you can buy, they're very expensive. expensive. And that's the other thing, it's a very expensive, um, type of process and involves a lot of things. So it's not very portable, <laughs> you know? You, you, between the griddles and the electricity and the tools and the heat um, and just all the, the stuff, it's just, it's a lot. How do you bleach the oil all the time? So you, you take a squirt of the oil yeah. paint onto the paper towel oh. and I leave the paper towel for like a day or two and I can and see all the oil has kind yeah. of come out, mm -hmm. and then I just scoop the innards, and I and then I mix a tiny amount of that into the wax. And I have another question. Yes. When you pull the blue paint yes. off, is there any danger that you're going to crack? Or? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> so not okay. The, and you see those drip marks? Yeah. Those will fall everywhere, <laughs> all over. And I, when people walk into my studio, I warn them, like, you're gonna end up, well, I actually now have, you know when you go to a house, an open house, and you make more the movies? I actually have that because it gets tracked all over my house. Wow. It's mm -hmm. I have shoes that I only wear in the studio, and sometimes I forget and I may run out, and so, um, the studio is pretty close to the master bathroom, and I can tell you, oh. that beautiful floor. <laughs> oh, no. As, look, you, you can just see, you're like, what is that? And then you walk up to it, and then you use your thumbnail, and you're like, yeah, that's the wax. <laughs> and it just it, it just goes wherever I go. It's, like, it's almost like it's, it's like glitter. <laughs> you know? It's just everywhere, and I will find it in all kinds of places. So I do, you know, I don't know how to prevent. I have a I have a laminate flooring in my studio, and then I also have some paper down too. But the floors are just little, little tiny. Like I can even crack it off my like little pieces like this everywhere, and you know they can get like smooshed into the to the floor. So yes, that's one of the not cute parts. Do you have to worry about these cracking? About the the wax layers cracking? So you don't want to expose this to extreme changes in temperature, oh. but that would be true for most art. Yeah. You know, um, you can get, depending on the ratio of resin to the wax, some people believe in a, uh, 
eight to two, eight wax, two resin ratio. Mm -hmm. Some people believe in eight one, and it depends. And the higher resin in there, which is the part that hardens it and increases mm -hmm. the melting temperature, the higher you go with the resin, the more likely it is for cracking. So if I have like something like this, for example, which is really thinly layered, I don't have to worry yeah. too much about it getting bumped or you know mm -hmm. chipped or anything. But something that has like more kind of you know organic edging like this, um, there's a possibility for it if it if something hit it, it could get mm -hmm. chipped off. But naturally, it's not going to chip or fall off unless it was probably exposed to the mm -hmm. extreme cold or heat change or something. And I do know from other encaustic artists that there is a concern slash issue about mailing your paint or shipping your paintings oh. when you're shipping it to a different climate. Mm -hmm. And it went from a hot climate to a cold climate. And there, there are concerns like that. So mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable having it locally, but I yeah. have sent um, a handful of pieces around the country and I haven't had any issues yet. So, how do you protect the surface of the painting when you're shipping? Um, I, what I do is I wrap it in um, like a cloth, like I'll take old t-shirts uh -huh. and I'll wrap it, depending on the size of the painting. Mm -hmm. um, I save everything, I save sheets, pillowcases, everything that's soft and for transporting it or mailing it. And so um, sometimes when I send to an art exhibit across the country, they'll, they'll take this out of the package and there'll be like a t-shirt on top, you know, covering it. And, um, and then we, um, my husband, he um, has a business where he's able to ship out everything. So he does a lot of my packaging and he will, um, will just do a lot of pushy layers. Mm -hmm. So, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, so does anybody have any Did you see the Fayoum's um, long ago, I'd say at least 10 years ago, at the Art Institute? Uh, the, they were over mummy, uh, wooden mm -hmm. masks over mummies found in Egypt. And they had about at least eight, maybe six. And they were beautiful. And they were thousands of years old. Yeah, and that is the example. If you do research on this type of painting, they always reference the that era mm -hmm. and um, how the Egyptians used the painting. And it mm -hmm. was very preserved mm -hmm. with the wax. So I have no idea how they figured it out, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> does the wax, does that affect how light passed the painting? It must, I, I mean, it protects it somehow, but mm -hmm. it's like right. yeah. it, it, I mean, I see it like a shield. I haven't seen yeah. any change in the color. The color is mm -hmm. just what you're going to get based on what you mix into it. Yeah. So um, I have purchased, um, when it comes to white and black and yellow and just some stronger colors, I have purchased actual sticks of the medium just to have a little bit more intensity because mm -hmm. when I make a white, it doesn't always become the white I want it to be um, or I want my black to be really rich and dark. So, and then other times I'll just make use my oil paint method with the leaching the oil and, mm -hmm. and mixing that in. So again, you just, <laughs> you have an expectation and it doesn't always become what you want it to be, but that's, oftentimes the best part of the art making that we do because you know it's like that's the happy surprise and if not this is very forgiving because you can either scrape back the layers you can use chisels scrape it back or you can just cover it up mm -hmm. so it's a really um you mess up and you're just kind of like okay i'll just do something else you don't have to worry about wasting that nice board right and i save every scrap so I have all over the studio, um, I have just bowls of scraps. And I'll often take the scraps and make a little pot of color out of those. Or, you know, maybe I'm trying to mix like a brown or a gray and I just throw any little random scrap into there and it just 
mixes really nicely. Well, pick up those pieces on the floor. <laughs> Scrape them off or grab them and be like, that goes in there. You know, and yeah, I, but I save everything um, because the wax is very expensive. The medium is very expensive. I just purchased um, a 10 pound bag of pellets and that's around $200. Mm -hmm. And when you get it, it doesn't look like a lot. You know, it's, and it, depending on how much wax you're using and how large of a painting you're doing, it can either go really quickly or you can use it for a long time. So that would last, for example, like a year or six months or? You know, it depends where I am. Depends what it depends where I am in my life. I've had oh. times where I could make it last a year. And then recently I went to reorder the bag and I saw that the last time I ordered, I just got it this week. And last time I ordered it was in October. Oh, so I really flew oh, through oh, yeah. that bag. Oh, busy, busy. Yes, finally. Because I, again, with my crazy life and five kids and the five and, kids, yes. and the husband. Um, you need like several mannings now. Yeah, right? exactly, <laughs> right. So, so there are, you know, times where I get, you know, wonderful time to do it and other times where, you know, life gets in the way and I walk past my studio and wave hi to it and I don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. But I was happy to see that, oh, I just, uh, I just ordered that show. This is great. I must be painting a lot. So, yeah. Anybody else have any more questions? I have a question about this piece here. Um, the mark making on the white, you know, the white on the bottom, mm -hmm. is that on top or is it under? Yeah, that is a grease pencil on top. Okay, mm -hmm. so then when you put the grease pencil on top, mm -hmm. Did you fuse that in? I finally? don't necessarily fuse like a grease pencil. You can, you can just do a really quick, you know, run over it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, in that particular case, I, it's not going to go anywhere. But if it, if it did or came up, like I wouldn't mind. Right. So I would be okay with if something, you know, went against it or, but it's not going to come off. Right. Unless mm -hmm. you scrape it off or um, do something to it. But it has a layer of clear wax over it? Um, or no? It might. With the grease pencil, it may or may not. It probably does. I can't remember. I don't know. They seem strikingly uh, dark uh, marks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you were to put a a clear over it, wouldn't it dull in it a little bit? No, actually with all the black mark making, whether that's with the charcoal, pencil, grease, pencil, anything, mm -hmm. what I've found is when you apply the heat, it brings out the intensity of the black. Wow. It does the opposite. Mm -hmm. So even with the image transfer and the inks and anything um, that's dark like that, it just pops it. That's exciting. It is exciting. A lot yeah. of like cool things happen. It's just it's very experimental. I you know I really believe for me that the marks that you've made on of course you know that's probably not on top or whatever you probably I don't know what level it is, but these really pull the whole piece together mm -hmm. in this corner and then up in the you know up in that corner right there. Thank you. Beautiful. And of course, the big black splotch. It's called Black Dot. Black Dot for the piece. Cool. Hi. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. So, any more questions? Hmm. Do you feel like you have a sense for how this works? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't set up a whole operation here. <laughs> you know, no ventilation and riddles and all the heat and stuff. But I do have the studio in my house. If anybody's ever interested in coming over and seeing the actual process and putting on those booties. <laughs> and I'm, I'm always happy to show people how it works. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Welcome. Hello. I'm sorry, I missed it. Yeah. Uh, did you yeah. notice we were 